from the South Point studio. There. <laughs> the perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear them down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. Comedy. See over under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. For real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> when I look at the clock, I go, ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines, live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos Racecourse. This weekend, the top California juveniles will be in action. It's the trials to the grade two Robert A. Dare Kindergarten Futurity this Sunday night. Great racing action is in store with the juveniles with the 10 fastest times advancing to the kindergarten final on May 12th. Plus, night racing's best bets like our early and late pick fours and our $10,000 pick six promo. We'll add 10,000 to the pick six pool on Sunday if there's not a carryover. Last Sunday's pick six paid over $34,000. And horse players, Los Alamitos is the perfect place to enjoy all of the national simulcast racing action. From Santa Anita and Oaklawn to Gulfstream Park and the top New York tracks. And remember to reserve a table in the beautiful Vessels Club for Kentucky Derby Day. For reservations, call 714-820-2681. We're all about the horse players. The kindergarten trials this Sunday night. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos Racecourse. The following is a Race Day Las Vegas presentation in association with Sirocco Productions Limited on the Race Day Las Vegas Radio Network. Live from the gaming capital of the world, time for Race Day Las Vegas, covering the sport of kings with a Las Vegas perspective. Now to the race desk with your host, Ralph Sirocco. From the backstretch to the turf club, at the race books and on the internet, to all horse players around the world, a good morning. All righty, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Race Day Las Vegas radio program. We come to you live and direct from the gaming capital world, Las Vegas, Nevada, right here at our South Point Studios location at the South Point Hotel Casino Complex on Las Vegas Boulevard, right here in your gaming capital. We welcome you to the show, and of course, uh, we uh, welcome everybody uh, watching and listening to us on the South Point Studios Network on YouTube. If you haven't tried it out yet, do so. You can see and hear us on the uh, on that uh, streaming there at uh, YouTube, and uh, we invite you to do that. And when you're there for the first time, hit the uh, subscribe button there. Uh, it costs you free. It's nothing. It's just a subscribe to let us know where you're at and what you're doing. Okay? So uh, welcome to the show for those of you listening and watching on YouTube. Of course, uh, we have many different platforms. You know what they are, and we welcome those folks each and every day to our show because th however you get us, you're important to us on this race day show. And that includes uh, those listening to us running around town here in Las Vegas at our anchor radio station, Sports Talk 1400 AM and 107.1 FM. And of course, all of you uh, on the internet, uh, maybe uh, streaming at our websites, racedaylasvegas.com.vegas.world.global, or maybe your devices, your iPhones, Androids, with your KSHP app that you can hear us with and your YouTube app that you can hear and see us with. 
and of course, anywhere you get your podcasting. Simply put, however, wherever, whenever. Welcome to the Race Day Show as we start our countdown now to the Kentucky Derby. Do you know, or I'll tell you, 17 days to go until the Kentucky Derby. Just 17 days till the Kentucky Derby and all of our activity and celebrating here at the South Point that starts on Thursday, the uh, 2nd of uh, May, when we're going to have our special Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Oaks preview show here only on the South Point Studios Network at YouTube. Can't get it anywhere else at 3 o'clock on that Thursday with a host of handicappers and, of course, our two handicappers that will be with us uh, later on in the week in the uh, Kentucky Derby seminar that, of course, Jonathan Hardoon and John Lendo. That seminar will happen the following day on Kentucky Oaks Day, May 3rd, right after the Kentucky Oaks Day program and the uh, racing on the West Coast at 6 o'clock in the Grandview Lounge. We'll be doing the annual Kentucky Derby seminar with Jonathan Hardoon and, of course, uh, John Lendo. That starts at 6 o'clock on uh, the day, uh, on the eve of uh, the Kentucky Derby. And, of course, right after the Kentucky Oaks uh, card, we'll be talking a little bit about what happened on Kentucky Oaks Day as well as look ahead to the Kentucky Derby, obviously. And then the next day, on Saturday, the big day, it is Kentucky Derby Day. Finally, we get to see the 150th running of the America's Most Famous Horse Race, and we'll be doing it in the big uh, ballroom upstairs, the grand ballroom, where they have the big screen TVs, little TVs for all the other action going on that day, and, of course, uh, a bank of betting windows. You'll have food and uh, drink discounts. Uh, that uh, won't uh, bleed your pocket, that's for sure. And big banquet tables, they can just spread out and have your friends come and enjoy the day of racing as well with me and Jonathan and uh, John Lindo as well. And, of course, the Derby Hat Contest. Wouldn't be the Derby without a Derby Hat Contest, right? They're going to have a Derby Hat Contest with many different categories for cash prizes, and it's all for free. That's right. Park your car for free and come on in and enjoy all of the festivities that start at 3 p.m., on Thursday with the special Kentucky O's Kentucky Derby uh, show here at the South Point Studio Streaming Network. All right, now that you know about all that, and make sure you come on down and join us and introduce yourself to us as well. We're going to have a good time all on that day. All right, decision about Muth. You know the owner of Muth, Mr. Zandan, has been trying to get Muth into the uh, Kentucky Derby and get a stay against uh, Bob Baffert's ban in uh, Churchill Downs. Well, this thing's been going on for a couple of weeks now, and every, every week they say, it's gonna, we're going to make the decision on Monday. That was two Mondays ago. Then they were say, we're going to wait a week because we need uh, some uh, information from the racing board or what the heck ever they're looking for. And they said it'll be Monday. Well, that Monday passed too, just this past Monday. Now we're still waiting. And now the judge wants to know why the owner decided to wait until this late in the game to file the lawsuit to get his horse in the Kentucky Derby. Well, simply put, really, uh, Muth didn't, didn't have enough uh, points for the Kentucky Derby to get in the field the, uh, the regular way with the points until he won the Arkansas Derby. And so this was filed after the Arkansas Derby. So who knows when they're going to make this decision? Probably make it in August sometime and say, oops, I'm sorry you missed the Derby. But you can go next year with another horse, anyhow. And, of course, the ongoing uh, lawsuits for Justify, who won the Santa Anita Derby, what, a couple of years ago, four or five years ago? He got disqualified from that race. The purse was redistributed. Now they want to stay, and they want the money brought back to the owners of Justify. So that goes on. It seems like Bob Baffert's spending more time in court than Donald Trump. So whatever the case may be, uh, we will wait and see about that. Phil Schoenhall, Schoenhall, Phil Schoenhall, Schoenhall, the trainer in uh, in uh, Philadelphia, got 15 days. His suspension, that big suspension he was going to get until they got the splint samples, well, now it's to 15 days, so Phil will have 15 days off. And as you know, as uh, uh, Jonathan Hardoon said on the show, he was tipped off that uh, deterministic uh, who was uh, – the 16th on the leaderboard uh, for the Kentucky Derby uh, is unlikely to run, and more likely than not, he is not going to run. And that was uh, tipped off to us uh, by uh, Jonathan last week. So as we look at the top 20 now, and if I'll get over there and get that, in the top 20 right now with um, 
deterministic sitting at 16 and not going now. That bumps up behind him, society man, mystic Dan, T.O. Pass, word. And since no more time is not going, that uh, brings in Encino and Hades. So it's still the ones at the bottom of the uh, the uh, list, uh, the bottom of the rung, are still uh, kind of jockeying, no pun intended, for position there. But that's the latest on that. Coming up this weekend, Laurel Park has five stakes races, one Preakness win and you're in race. Now, you know, they started with the Kentucky Derby points for the Derby. That's all over with those horses. No more points for that. We got that set. Now we got some Preakness win in your in races. One of them, of course, will be at uh, Laurel Park this weekend, uh, the Tessio. That's a win in your in. Uh, there'll be three Preakness win in your in races around the country this weekend for the Preakness stakes, the middle jewel of the Triple Crown. Now, remember that uh, these win in your in races and the points for the Derby only means something if you have been nominated to the Triple Crown. Okay? You have to be nominated to the Triple Crown. So the uh, Preakness winning or in race will be the Federico Tessio at Laurel. Uh, Keeneland will have uh, two stakes races this weekend, a grade two and a grade three. Oaklawn Park will have three stakes races this weekend, one grade two and uh, two uh, uh, grade ones. And uh, the big race, of course, is at Oaklawn this weekend, and that is the, uh, the big uh, Oaklawn handicap for another million and change. And uh, Santa Anita will have a couple of grade threes. They'll be back in action on Friday. Aqueduct will come in with a stakes race on Saturday and on Sunday. Santa Anita will have two grade uh, three stakes races. Uh, one grade three, I should say, and another stakes race. And Hawthorne will have the Illinois Derby. The Illinois Derby is going to be a win and you're in race for the Preakness stakes. All right? And uh, one of the greatest stakes races at Oaklawn this weekend will also be a win in your end for the Preakness. So you got three races this weekend that will be win in your end races for the Preakness stakes, the middle jewel of the Triple Crown, which is two weeks after your Derby, which is 17 days away. Okay, good enough for that. Um, <clears throat> funny thing that uh, Golden Gate has canceled their races coming up this week on Friday. Golden Gate has canceled the racing on Friday because of lack of entries, not because of the weather, but lack of entries. More on that story a little bit later on with John Lindo. Got to be something under the, uh, under the hood on that one, that's for sure. Lack of entries for that. All right, today we got Jonathan Hardoon with us. We got, of course, uh, Rich Ang, John Lindo, and Jerry J. Of course, Jonathan, Rich, and John Lindo will also have picks for today's racing at Keeneland. There is racing at Keeneland today. That meet continues to go for at least another week, week and a half. And, of course, Jerry J is going to come up with some more handicapping thoughts, some handicapping hints on how he handicaps as well. And, of course, your racing menu coming up right next. So don't go away. We're just starting this week covering uh, the great sport of horse racing, Las Vegas style, here from the South Point Studios in Las Vegas. We'll be right back. Don't go away. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. All right, back on Race Day Las Vegas as we start another week covering horse racing here from Las Vegas. And uh, all I can say is the weather's finally starting to get nice. Today, right now, outside, it's 62 degrees. The sun is shining and no wind. That's good here, okay? And this is the way that it's going to be for the rest of the weekend. Today, we're going to get up to 89 degrees, and I think we're going to push 90 by the time we get to the weekend. So it's finally, we're finally thawing out from all that crazy uh, winter and uh early spring weather that they, we've been having. And as far as around the country, Tampa Bay is going to be 90 today. Miami, 80. Uh, let's see. New York City will be 60. Southern California, 79. And Los Angeles, 
and in Phoenix, 92 degrees. So it's it's getting, uh, finally, it's getting a, a thaw out for spring here across the country, that's for sure. And as far as the weather is concerned around the country today, a lot of action going up in Wisconsin and through the Great Lakes area, and there's a swath of, uh, of uh, rain, et cetera, going through from uh, Tennessee through Kentucky up through uh, Pennsylvania, et cetera, is going to make its way across the East Coast, that's for sure. Mid uh, the Plain States, uh, mid mid uh, the mid eastern uh, the Plain States, and all the way out to the West Coast is clear. For the most part, the Gulf Coast is clear, and right now the Atlantic Coast is clear. But that uh, front is going to be moving through there, so we'll wait and see about that. All right, time to get started with the racing menu of racetracks available today in the race book, simulcast centers, and racetracks across the country. We remind you, as we always do, the first post times we broadcast on this racing menu each and every day. Reflect that of the Pacific time zone. So if you're here in Las Vegas, come on out to our race book here at the South Point. These will be the first post times rolling out on our race books. We are in the Pacific time zone. If you're listening on any other time zone, and we know throughout the world with the worldwide uh, distribution that uh, you're in many different time zones. So if you are, uh, just adjust from your time zone to whatever the, you have to the Pacific time zone so you don't miss anything in case you want to, you know, maybe... Make a bet early. Don't want to miss it. I don't want you to miss anything like I miss mom and dad. So six racetracks on our menu today. First post times reflect that of the start time in the Pacific time zone. We begin our racing menu with Tampa Bay Downs. Tampa Bay Downs has a first post time today of 930 Pacific time. And they have a pick six jackpot carryover, $5,766. First post time is 930 at Tampa Bay. Next comes Parks Racing. Now, uh, Parks Racing, of course, uh, has those uh, pick five jackpot. Pick five jackpot today, Parks Racing starts off at $51,036. $51,036 is the start-off point for the pick six jackpot today at Parks Racing. Their first post time is 940. Then we get to Keeneland Racecourse. Keeneland today in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Keeneland has a first post time of 10 a.m. 10 a.m. first post time at Keeneland. Following that will be Horseshoe, Indianapolis. Horseshoe, Indianapolis has a first post time of 11.10. 11.10 today at Horseshoe, Indianapolis. Then following that will be Turf Paradise in Phoenix, Arizona. That pick six jackpot has been building like for weeks. Right now, your pick six jackpot carryover for Turf Paradise today stands at $410,515. First post-time Turf Paradise is 125 this afternoon. And then we wrap up the six uh, racetracks on the menu today with Evangeline Downs. That first post-time is at 3.30. And that is your racing menu for today. Okay? Um, real quick, taking a look at what happened on Sunday at Keeneland. Uh, we, uh, John Lindo fin- had a horse that finished second in, in uh, the races there. And the pick six at Keeneland on Sunday, paid $68,155.75. Wow. Good stuff there, that's for sure. And uh, at Aqueduct on uh, Sunday, uh, looks like uh, mostly just a, a lot of uh, favorites winning there. As a matter of fact, the highest priced winner was $16. Had three stakes races, though. The top flight was won by Tizzy in the Sky for Kendrick Carmouche, Todd Fletcher trainee there, paying $3.70. And then you had the New York. State Stallion Series, the Times Square Division won by Antonio of Venice. Manny Franco and Rudy Rodriguez teaming up for their second win together on the day, paying $4.50. And in the uh, other division, the the, uh, Park Avenue Division, the winner there was Sunday Girl with uh, Katie Davis aboard, her second win of the day, paying $4.60 for that there at Aqueduct. Kind of a little brief of what happened on Sunday at Aqueduct and around the country. Now we get to Jonathan Ardoon standing by in New York. Jonathan, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. How are you? I'm assuming that you're going to get some weather passing through there soon. They said it's supposed to rain tonight, uh, but as we speak, it's uh, it's clear and sunny here. It's a little chilly, but it, it's a nice day. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, we got uh, we're 17 days away from the Kentucky Derby. We got a few uh, horses that are going to be defected. They've already defected. I would imagine we'll get a couple of more at least before the final draw for the Kentucky Derby on the week of the Derby is, and then we'll be set and ready to go there. But remember, 
even after they draw for the Kentucky Derby, as we saw, what, last year, uh, it actually only had 18 horses. Yeah, and two years ago, Rich Strike got in the Friday morning before the Derby. Yeah. He wasn't even on the program or on any of the T-shirts they were selling. <laughs> and he ended, up, he ended up winning the race. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, that's that's going to be a story that's going to be uh, that's going to be told for a long time. That is that is a story of Kentucky Derby allure, that's for sure, uh, and uh, no question about it. But I guess right now everybody's centering on uh, the horses that uh, seem to have the most accomplishment going into it. You got Sierra Leone, you got Fierceness, and a few others sitting in there. But there's always that horse that is peaking at the right time on the first Saturday in May, and not three or four Saturdays before that. And I guess we, the only way we can probably detect that might be when the horses actually get and start training at Churchill Downs. Several are already there. How they take to the track, how they look in the morning, if they get more dappled out, if they're on their toes more in the morning, right? Indications like that? Yeah, everybody's keeping very close eye. You know, the clockers, the trainers, everyone's eye is on every single horse. They don't want to see any body stub their toe or take a step back. And again, believe me, there's still 17 days, like you said, and you know that uh, the field is not set in stone. Not only that, what happens with the Baffert case? Uh, imagine if uh, this judge actually uh, rules in, in his favor. Well, now Muth is going to get in, and anybody that bet uh, the field as far as the future bet's concerned, well, they got a pretty good price on Muth. I think he's going to be 22 to 1 if the judge, you know, uh, lets him in. So that's going to be interesting. A lot of things still happening, especially behind the scenes. Now, Jonathan, when you say when you refer to 22 to 1, you're talking about the uh, position of all others in the future book, that was 22 to 1, but Muth will yeah. not be yeah. anywhere near 22 to 1 in, in the actual race on betting day. you got to figure he'd be one of the three favorites, wouldn't you? For sure. That's going to be one of the greatest overlays of all time. You know, I'm totally against future bet books, but if you can get 22 to 1 on Muth <laughs> the day of the Derby, or anyone else, but, you know, any other strangers that happen to pop up, well, then that becomes a pretty good bet, I guess. Now, uh, Jonathan, of course, uh, you know, we're talking about Muth and the delay that the uh, judge keeps having with the decision on this. And you know, as soon as the, if this decision goes Bob Baffert's owner's way, that there'll be an immediate appeal to that. So the judicial system might keep this horse out of the race. But be forewarned, folks, that it's not Muth sitting on the sidelines and staying in a stall. He's been training steadily as if he was going to race on the first Saturday in May because if he doesn't race on the first Saturday in May at Churchill Downs, there'll be a race coming up soon that he will be performing in. So it's not like this horse won't be ready. The horse will be ready. It's just, uh, you know, how the judicial system is. We may not get a decision until Saratoga starts. But, but the judge is going to make one very good point. This owner had the opportunity, if he wanted to run in the Derby, to, to change trainers, you know, back in January. That was the rules that uh, Churchill put in place. And uh, that's going to be, I guess, the, the judge's uh, explanation if he doesn't accept the, the, the lawsuit. So, listen, the worst thing, uh, Ralph, is when, when you get the judicial system involved. You, you never want the government involved. You don't want, you know, horse racing is its, it's, its own entity. They should take care of business in-house. Don't go and bring court systems into it because it only makes it that much worse. Look at HISA. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a government uh, agency that was created because horse racing wasn't getting their act together. It's really that simple. And uh, so horse racing has a little bit, at least the, the, the people are running the racing at the top, the organizations, et cetera, will have a little bit to blame themselves because of that. And uh, just like anything else, as far as the government is concerned, it gets down to the last guy, and that's the consumer, which we are, the players. And whatever happens, uh, we're going to pay the price for it one way or the other. Uh, the the uh, bill buck for the buck stops at the customer. Unfortunately, you're 100% correct. The, the players are going to get the raw end of the stick again. Now, I want to remind everybody, too, that uh, you know when we, uh, when we do the uh, special show on Thursday, we'll be concentrating – mostly on the Kentucky Oaks and the Kentucky Oaks Day of Racing because that will be the first uh, 
in front of us, which will be that Friday before we actually do the seminar that evening after those races are over. We will, of course, take a, a look at the Derby and kind of preview what we'll be talking about for the Kentucky Derby seminar the night after, the day after. But the Thursday, that Thursday show is going to be a show where we're going to bring in as many handicappers as we can. Uh, and uh, we may go over the time limit of an hour, but it won't matter because we're not going to be simulcasting on any other venue except this one, the South Point Studios uh, Network on YouTube. you got to go to YouTube and get it, and that's the only way you're going to get it. And we're going to be doing, uh, as you can see on the uh, graphic, it'll be me, Jonathan, and John Lindo for sure, but then there's going to be who knows how many guest handicappers that we're going to get as well. I know we'll get, be getting uh, Steve Johnson, uh, the uh, race book director here at South Point, tell you all about the contest and all that stuff for Derby Day. And, of course, uh, our man, uh, Chris Andrews, the sports director here at the South Point, who was the only one who successfully uh, uh, picked uh, the winner of last year's Kentucky Derby on our show. So, But we'll, uh, we're going to try to have some more people as well, kind of surprise guests. So to make sure you get to tuning in 3 o'clock Thursday, May 2nd for that show, that's for sure. But uh, talking and about the good, news, Ralph, the good news is we're going to lean on the Friday races. So, you yeah. know, you're not going to get them anywhere else. So we're going to go through, I guess, most of them and certainly concentrate on the Oaks. So and by the way, we're going to get an opportunity to get Friday stuff early. You're absolutely right. I'm glad you mentioned that, Jonathan, because on that Friday, you know, we know that the Kentucky Oaks will be the main event. The Kentucky Oaks is going to be a million five hundred thousand dollar purse. But there's also another million-dollar race, the La Trion, that's a grade one. And in addition to those stakes races, on that Friday, you'll have the Ali Sheba uh, stakes, the Edgewood stakes, the Eight Bells, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, the Modesty as well, and the Unbridled Sydney stakes. All of these stakes races, in addition to, of course, the $2 million ones, on that Friday, before we get started in searching for the Saturday, and of course, on Saturday Derby Day, you know all of the stakes races there. You've got the American Turf, you got the Churchill Down Stakes, you got the Derby City Distaff, you got the Kentucky Derby itself for a five million dollar purse. I want to remind everybody they jacked up the purse of the Kentucky Derby is now five million dollar race, and uh, you'll also have on that day uh, the Knicks Go Overnight Stakes, which is a two hundred thousand dollar race. How'd you like to have a stakes race for two hundred grand an overnight stakes race? <laughs> Uh, the uh, Churchill Downs Distaff Turf Mile, the Old Forester Bourbon Turf Classic, that's a million-dollar race. And uh, the Pat Day Mile, always a very interesting race, the Pat Day Mile, because a lot of the three-year-olds that can't get the mile and a quarter wound up, wind up in the Pat Day Mile. That's going to be a real good race on Derby Day. You got the Twin Spires Turf Sprint uh, all on that day as well. So it's going to be a, two big days of huge uh, stakes races and racing that weekend, and we'll get it all started with that special on Thursday, May 2nd at 3 o'clock, only here on the YouTube uh, South Point uh, Network on YouTube. That's for sure. Uh, and I would have to say, and looking at uh, the Kentucky Oaks, and uh, not so much marquee uh, fillies, but it's a really important race for the three-year-old fillies, is it not? Well, of course, it's an important race. I mean, you know, it has uh, breeding implications, obviously, down the road. And uh, if you finish in the top three, you become worth a lot more money than you are already. And uh, it's a, it's actually a pretty good betting race. It may be a better betting race than the Derby itself, but let's see what happens. And, you know, in the uh, in the Kentucky Derby, we got, of course, Sierra Leone, Fierceness. Uh, it'll be, uh, you know, vying for favoritism if Muth gets in there. But then you've got other horses like Stronghold. He, he uh, you know, he won the Santa Anita Derby. He's getting better. Forever Young, that's the winner of the UAE Derby. And a lot of people think that Japan might be, this might be the year for Japan winning the Kentucky Derby. I mean, Forever Young already at uh, Churchill Downs uh, uh, training there. And then you got a lot of other horses. But the, the, the other horses in the race are the ones that I'm going to be concentrating on because it's always one or two of those horses with the big prices that get into the trifecta, that get into the superfecta, that really explode the payoff of that uh, particular bet. Yeah, there's a horse named Anna Marie that actually finished second to Sierra Leone. They, came, they come out of the same race, and nobody is talking about Anna Marie. But if you watch the race and you watch it closely, 
This horse ran really well in that race, and uh, he's getting better with every start, like you said, and he could be peaking at the right time. It's a low-profile connections. Ben Curtis is the jockey, you know. Uh, not many people know who Ben Curtis is. I'm sure he's a terrific rider, but uh, he's not Flavian Pratt. He's not uh, the Ortiz brothers. Yeah. And the trainer is Beckwith, who's also, you know, not a household name, but uh, – that does a terrific job, and he's a young trainer, and he's getting an opportunity. And I wouldn't be surprised if that horse outran his odds. So and now that a race, little, a little early sneak preview. And that race you're talking about that he ran second and happened to be the Louisiana Derby. And so from the Louisiana Derby, he's going to be training right into the Kentucky Derby. Another horse that's sneaky, in my opinion, is D. Wayne Lucas is just steel. He's a son. Uh, he's an offspring of uh, Justify. We know that's a that's a uh, prominent uh, sire was second in the Arkansas Derby. Same thing, ran second in that race. But uh, you know that uh, Mr. Lucas uh, knows how to get a horse ready for the uh, Derby for any race, really. And Keith Smusen's going to get the opportunity to ride him. That's uh, you know Steven Smusen's son. So uh -huh. there's going to be stories within stories involved in this Derby. Going to be real interesting and really a lot of fun. That's for sure. And we will wait and see uh, with the horses training and all that, the derby, and, of course, the litigation, et cetera, that moves on. An interesting uh, twist to this uh, Kentucky Derby, that's for sure, because the litigation for a horse that would be a, one of the prominent favorites in the race still hanging in the course in Kentucky. So we'll wait and see about that. All right. Well, we'll uh, we got some uh, racing today. we got uh, Keeneland and, uh, and of course, uh, other uh, tracks. Uh, how, Keeneland's been a really neat meet, I thought. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm not doing well yet. Well, I but. know you guys. You guys, well, guys, we got to we got to step you guys up. You know, just taking a little back seat there, but that's for sure. Now, you know, I talk about the the Kentucky Derby. We we're talking about the points and all that, and, and now they're all done. That's it. You can't get any more points as far as that's concerned. But now it seems that seems to be kind of the trend of what's happening uh, around the country for big racing days. We already got uh, you know Preakness win and you're in races. Now we got three of them this weekend that go into the Preakness win and you're in. And the Breeders' Cup just announced their win and you're in uh, program. Win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup. Now, we know that's, uh, you know, far away the first weekend yeah, in November. Yeah. But nevertheless, there's going to be 82 races across the world that are going to be win and you're in races for the uh, Breeders' Cup. 12 countries are involved, 41 international races. There'll be races in Argentina, Brazil, Canada, Chile, England, France, Ireland, Japan, Peru, South Africa, and now even South Korea that has winning your in races for the uh, Breeders' Cup. And by the way, as far as the American racetracks, Del Mar is going to have six of them. But I got to tell you, the New York Racing Association has the most American Breeders' Cup winning your in races this year. There'll be 15 overall, six at Aqueduct, and there'll be nine at Saratoga. So we're just starting on the road to that as well. Yeah, it's interesting. By the way, I don't recall in years past being so many races uh, winning you're in for the Preakness race. You know, yeah. I know that Pimlico or Laurel used to have one or two. All of a sudden, now they're popping up everywhere. I don't think it's a big deal to get into the Preakness because three quarters, uh, if you don't win the Derby, what's really the point to run in the Preakness two weeks later? So most of the field that runs in the Derby is not going to be showing up. You'll get the winner probably because he has an opportunity to win, to win the Triple Crown. But other than that, why would you want to push the horse back on two weeks? I don't think it's a good idea. And I don't think, again, most horses will run back if they don't have success in the Derby. You're absolutely right, because usually when you get the 20 horses that run in the Derby, maybe 10 of them, more than, more than half of the field, uh, you know, leaves and goes and takes a rest somewhere because they're really gearing up for the first Saturday in May. But uh, there is a dynamic that will be working for this Preakness. First of all, as you say, whoever wins the Derby, that's the only horse that can achieve a triple crown victory this year. So that horse, all parts in right places will be going on to the Preakness more likely than not. But then again, right. if Baffert is denied to go in the Kentucky Derby with Muth, he's going to have that horse wound up and ready to go for the Preakness stakes. And wouldn't it be something if Muth beats the Derby winner in the Preakness and denies that horse a win for the Triple Crown? So that dynamic is still working out there for the Preakness. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves right now. It's time, I think, to do something immediate and get a couple of picks winners for today, Jonathan. 
Okay, let's look at Tampa Bay and look at the first race today. Seven furlongs on the main track. And I like the number six horse in here, Luna Soul. This is a three-year-old filly from the Gustivo Amaya barn. Carlos Lugo aboard to ride. She ran very well last time out when making her first start at Tampa. She's listed at four to one on the morning line. Graduation day today for number six, Luna Soul. Today's opener out at Tampa Bay Downs. All right, the six Luna Soul, uh, uh, four to one on the morning line, the six in the first race at Tampa Bay Downs. Want to remind everybody, the uh, first post time at Tampa Bay today is early, and that is at 9.30 this morning, 9.30, an hour and a half after we're off the air. That's the first race at Tampa. And... Keelan, race eight, seven furlongs on the main track. And I like the number seven horse in here, Practical Thought. This is a three-year-old gelding from the Paul McGee barn. Brian Hernandez aboard to, to ride. Draw a line to this horse's first race at fairgrounds. That track was so messed up. It was uh, slop. It was a total quagmire. Last time out, ran very well on running on a fast track at fairgrounds. Now ships to Keelan, 7-2 on the morning line. Number seven, Practical Thought, a graduate to wins today's eighth race out at Keelan. All right, you got it. So Tampa Bay first race, number six. Keeneland's um, eighth, eighth race, race, number six as well. Uh, number seven, I should say, number seven in that race. Correct. Perfect. Practical thought. Seven horse in the right. eighth at Keeneland. Okay. Uh, sheets for today? We have two sheets, Keeneland and Tampa. Uh -huh. J-O-N-H-A-R-D-O-O-N.com. Thank you, Ralph. All right. You got him, my man. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And look at this, folks. He's, he was kind today. No soapbox for Jonathan Hardoon today. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Jonathan. Be well and stay safe. All right. You got it. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Rich Ang is standing by, and he's got a Keeneland sheet for you today, and uh, we'll see what's up for him as far as sports is concerned as well. Hey, we got the baseball season started, you know, and NBA playoffs underway. There's always something going on. We'll be right back. Who is there for heroes or the families left behind when a service member or first responder dies or is catastrophically injured in the line of duty? Who helps our country's homeless veterans? And who helps our nation to never forget 9-11? Let me tell you who. The Tunnel to Towers Foundation. The Foundation's Gold Star, Fallen First Responder, Smart Home, and Homeless Veteran programs comprise their In the Line of Duty programs. They're all dedicated to honoring our nation's heroes and their families. The Foundation's Never Forget programs engage people in 9-11 remembrance across America. Over 80 runs, walks, and climbs a year. Dozens of golf outings. And the Tunnel to Towers 9-11 Institute is educating kids in kindergarten through 12th grade to help our nation keep its vow to never forget. More than 95 cents of every dollar you donate to Tunnel to Towers goes to its programs. Never forget the sacrifices of our country's greatest heroes. Donate $11 a month to Tunnel to Towers at T2T.org. That's T, the number two, T.org. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's Racebook has you covered. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos Racecourse. This weekend, the top California juveniles will be in action. It's the trials to the grade two Robert Adair Kindergarten Futurity this Sunday night. Great racing action is in store with the juveniles with the 10 fastest times advancing to the kindergarten final on May 12th. Plus, night racing's best bets like our early and late pick fours and our $10,000 pick six promo. We'll add 10,000 to the pick six pool on Sunday if there's not a carryover. Last Sunday's pick six paid over $34,000. And horse players, Los Alamitos is the perfect place to enjoy all of the national simulcast racing action. From Santa Anita and Oaklawn to Gulfstream Park and the top New York tracks. And remember to reserve a table in the beautiful Vessels Club for Kentucky Derby Day. For reservations, call 714-820-2681. We're all about the horse players. The kindergarten trials this Sunday night. The best of racing is always at Los Alamitos Racecourse.
Vegas for this Wednesday race day show. Starting the week, covering the great sport of Kings, Las Vegas style. We now go to Rich Ang standing by. And uh, Richie, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ralphie. And uh, I just wanted to to make a quick editorial comment because, you know, every show you list the top 20 and you and Jonathan talking about horses on the the bubble trying to get in. Yeah. Well, if you take a look at some of the results, some of the upsets in the last 15 years, you got real big long shots like Mind That Bird at 50 to 1, Country House at 65 to 1, and Rich Strike at 80 to 1. So these owners, trainers, and jockeys want to get into the 20 horse field because you never know what happens in the derby itself. Yeah, it's right. It's it's the, the biggest example in horse racing of uh, luck and opportunity and timing. And that's for sure. And that's the Kentucky Derby. And that's what makes it so great. It makes it America's most famous horse race, the run for the roses of the 150th edition coming up uh, this uh, in 17 days on the first Saturday in May. Well, Richie, we've got the, the football season is finally over, at least for the NFL. And, of course, uh, the basketball season is over as far as the college. But we got the NBA now starting and another football league that's already underway. Yeah, we had a couple of uh, play-in games last night, Ralph, and there's a couple of more today. And, uh, quite frankly, there was no show yesterday, Ralph, but I, I would have mentioned that my betting angle for these play-in games is I went under the total on all four games because – Finally, they're actually playing some defense because, you know, it's one and you're done. If you don't win last night and you don't win today, you're pretty much, uh, you know, out of, out of the picture. So uh, I did go under the total in the, the two games tonight. And that, of course, is the NBA. Now, what about the um, new uh, football league? I, I took a notion to watch some of it the other day, and it, it was pretty entertaining. Well, the leagues last year were actually pretty good. The uh, USFL and mm-hmm. the, uh, the, I forget the name of the other league with uh, the, the Rock and his, his football league. But they can anyway, they merged. Yeah. Yeah, they merged. So there's one league. And, uh, you know, last year I actually did okay betting uh, uh, one of the leagues uh, because I, I pay attention to quarterback play. And I mentioned last year that, uh, um, you know, the best quarterback in the league was a fellow named A.J. McCarron, yeah. who was playing for the St. Louis Battlehawks. And I was betting the Battlehawks every week, and they were getting the job done more often than not. And uh, McCarron actually uh, uh, con- signed a contract with the Bengals at the end of last year after uh, Joe Burrow got hurt. But he's playing still for the Battlehawks. So uh, I, my, that's my first trend when I look at these games, see who the quarterback is, because uh, that's the ability to move the football up and down the field. Yeah, no question about that. And, you know, it just gets you, you, you got to get kind of used to having football at this time of the year. But it's good as far as all of the other leagues that have tried to go against the NFL in, in, in a long, long time. This seems to be one that has a little teeth to it. If you just give it a little bit of time, I think that uh, people will start. You know, you have to have, uh, you know, the, 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 the history behind these teams to have a real good fan base. And we'll wait and see if they can uh, make that turn soon. That's for sure. But, of course, uh, right now uh, you're concentrating on horse racing as well, and that, of course, is uh, coming up with the Kentucky Derby and the big weekend uh, on the first Saturday, uh, first weekend in May, really. And, of course, uh, you have a Keeneland sheet uh, right now that's uh, Mm -hmm. covering the entire meet at Keeneland. What do we got, about a week and a half left at Keeneland, week, two weeks? Yeah, it closes on uh, Friday the 26th, and then uh, Churchill opens on the 27th, Saturday. It's been really fun racing and good racing at that at Keeneland, that's for sure. I know that we had some bad weather days, but uh, it... uh, it's still uh, it's some great racing for sure, and there's still a lot of good racing yet to go at Keeneland. And you have a Keeneland sheet, and of course, when Santa Anita kicks in on Friday again with the Hollywood meet, you'll be doing two sheets, one for uh, Keeneland and one for Santa Anita as they overlap. Uh, you got something for us today? Yeah, I got something for you today, yeah. Ralph. And uh, uh, one quick comment. If when you're watching the Keeneland races, whether it's on the – uh, FanDuel slash TVG or the track signal. It is great to see people in a crowd in the in the uh, audience and <laughs> in the stands because uh, they get tremendous attendance at uh, Keeneland every day. Yeah. Race eight Keeneland, Ralph. I'm going to set up a Sirocco play for you of all of all things in the eight race card. Uh, Jonathan, myself, land in the same race, but in race eight, I like the number eight horse Olivier. I guess it's named after the actor or something like that. But anyway, this horse uh, had run a couple of times at uh, Oaklawn Park, had a tough trip last night from post 10 in a two-turn mile and got stuck outside and had to show speed early. I like the fact that uh, Flavion Pratt takes them out. 
but this horse cutting back in distance, price tag, Keeneland, outside post of seven furlongs. Let's go with number eight, Olivier, race eight, Keeneland. All right, in the eighth race, you like the eight, Olivier, the eight in the uh, eighth race at Keeneland. That's easy to remember. So we got a Sirocco play between you and uh, uh, Jonathan between the seven and the eight. So I'll do a seven, eight box there uh, between you two guys for a Sirocco play in that eighth race at Keeneland. Number eight is the play. All right. Uh, well, thanks a lot, Richie, and uh, keep us abreast of what's going on with the NBA because when all these uh, you know playing games are over and we start really getting into the NBA championships, we'll uh, ask you for your expertise on uh, pro basketball. That's for sure. Thanks a lot, Rich. Hey, thanks, Rob. Good luck, everybody. All right. When we come back, we got John Lendo standing by, and then of course Jerry Jackwitz. But as far as John Lendo is concerned. The question for him is, what is going on at Golden Gate now? Well, we'll get that answer from John. Don't go away. We'll be right back. From the South Point Studio, the perfect blend of sports. But I think the Niners are going to wear him down. Detroit Pistons lost their 36 games. <laughs> Comedy. See the over-under on that relationship lasting. I'm going to put mayo in the coffee. Yes. Yes. I am beautiful. And a whole lot of Pittsburgh. In Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. Join Ryan McCormick. That's at least two picks outside of our own in the first round next year. A real. And host Frank Nicotero. <laughs> <laughs> Did I look at the clock. I... Ah! Ah! Oh! Watch Punchlines live at noon every weekday. South Point Casino is the perfect place to be. Our race book is completely separate from the sports book and totally dedicated to the horse player. With 52 overhead TVs, free Wi-Fi, and cocktail service. Bring your tablet or smartphone and plug into the USB ports to look up your favorite handicapping website without draining your battery. Want to wager from your seat? No problem with our IPTs. Just sign up, make a deposit, and you're off to the races. Plus, you'll earn points for dining, hotel, movies, entertainment, and the spa just by using the club card when wagering. South Point Casino's race book has you covered. All righty, back on Race Day Las Vegas. And, of course, source in las vegas i am sorry sweetheart i stepped on your line okay now <laughs> we are uh, back on race day las vegas and now we go up, out to uh john lendo standing by john southern california good morning good morning how you doing ralph i'm doing fine man how's the weather down there beautiful absolutely beautiful it's gonna finally looks like we're getting through that cold spell it'll be warm this weekend looking forward to getting a little sunshine out there and we're back racing on friday at santa anita all right, now I got the word that Golden Gate has canceled Friday's races, they told me, because of lack of entries, but you got an update on that story. Right, I saw that. They're racing Saturday, Sunday, but I went to the Golden Gate website, Ralph, and just looked at their racing calendar, and they tell you where the live racing days are, and I was surprised to find that basically now starting with this weekend, Golden Gate is going to two-day race weeks. They're just going to race Saturdays and Sundays. No Friday scheduled the rest of the meet. Only exceptions for a three-day week would be Monday, Memorial Day, and the Friday of the very last closing weekend in early June. That would be the only Friday they raised. So it looks like we're down to two days a week up in Northern California, and that probably has a lot to do with the Emerald Downs getting ready to get started up in, in Washington State. And I guess uh, the writing on the wall as far as the Northern California horsemen are concerned, they're going, going to start exiting before the last day, I guess, and the horse population has to be shrinking they're on the backside of Golden Gate. I haven't been up there, but that, you, you just get that feeling, don't you, that yeah. uh, it, it's kind of the exodus time. Yeah, it sure is. That's for sure. But now we, uh, you know, we've got uh, a pent-up uh, action going on in Southern California, San Nita. We haven't had racing there in a while. We're going to start on Friday. How's the entry box look there in Southern California? The Friday entries were okay. I, I think there were 66 horses on the nine-race card. We'll enter today for Saturday and see what we're looking at there. A couple of stakes races on Saturday. So uh, we'll just have to see. I, I think this is going to be about the norm for the rest of this meet. All right, John. Well, uh, we know that uh, while uh, you're waiting for Santa Anita to kick in again, you have one Lindo report, and that is for Keeneland Racecourse. You've been doing Keeneland all meet long. It's been some great racing there, hasn't it? Yeah, you know, they, they took a beating with the weather last week, and that, that kind of inhibited things. But the, the quality of the races are good. They've got all kinds of different races. You see a lot more turf marathons there than you do at other places. So it's fun to play. 
Yes, it sure is. And we got another big card today at uh, Keeneland. And the Linda Report for all of Keeneland today. Selections and all the races suggested late pick for and all the goody information at the bottom of the sheet available right now. Only in one place here in Las Vegas, Nevada, in your gaming capital. The Linda Report right here at the South Point Racebook because they love horse players. All right, uh, John, what are you going to do for us today? I fall in the same race as the other guy. I know you do. Oh, boy, this is going to be fun. We're all in race eight at Keeneland. Just a quick note, uh, the horse Richard Eng pick, number eight, Olivier, is a full brother to Flightline. So, uh, yeah, he's in for a $100,000 tag. Uh, You know, if you want him, you can go get him, but I don't think he's the same horse. So, um, as far as the race play, let's go to number six, Indy Magic, a first-time starter for trainer Doug O'Neill. He uses Luan Machado to ride. This is a guy he's put on several winners in the Kentucky circuit. I like the video workouts I've seen on the Keeneland main track. He's been stable there all winter long. Six to one on the program. I think he's going to love seven furlongs. Number six, Indy Magic, race number eight at Keeneland. All right. We got a ding, 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 ding going on here, folks. I got now a Sirocco a three-horse uh, box for exactas and trifectas. Uh, and, uh, John Leno comes in with number six. Uh, Jonathan Ardoon has the seven. Richie has the eight. Really simple. Six, seven, eight box for me in the Sirocco play. But John Lendo's play is number six, Indy Magic uh, from Doug O'Neill's farm. All right. Well, uh, keep an eye on what's going on there in Southern California and keep that sum coming so we can have some great racing to start off the weekend, the Hollywood meet at uh, Santa Anita. And uh, John, we'll talk to you tomorrow. And we're waiting for you to come on up and sit in studio for the big uh, Kentucky Derby weekend of shows. I'll be there soon, Ralph. You're heating up out there. I like it. Yes, sir, my man. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, John. Uh, and don't forget the uh, Linda Report uh, right now here at the uh, South Point for Keeneland. Let's bring in uh, Jerry Jackowitz because he's got some handicapping stuff for us. Jerry, good morning. Good morning, Ralph. Yes. We're going to talk a little handicapping. We never do, actually. It's, go, go ahead. We talk about picks, but we never talk about handicapping. So. All right. Go ahead. So, well, the first idea that I've, we've talked about is betting. And I was talking about win betting or win place betting if you have the right value. And obviously, you have to have handicapped some some horse and made some decisions on it and it should lead you into that bet. And that's why, and if you're right, you should cash. And if you're wrong, you should go on to the next one. And that's the basis of my philosophy. But when looking for handicapping, there's two, two things. There's one, my opinion on what's occurring with the horses and how I view them. And the other is the betting that comes in later on, from it, and you know that represents insider, represents so great the market. But we're looking in that betting aspect for insider money. And we'll get to that in a second. In handicapping, my philosophy is fairly simple. I'm looking for horses that appear to be improving, and if they're not obvious, they're even better, in my opinion. If I can see improvement, maybe a horse was trying to get to the lead in the first four furlongs, but was three or four wide and tired and maybe had a bad finish, but really ran very well for the first three and a half, four furlongs before they kind of eased up on the horse. That might be a sign of improvement, or I might look for a horse that was down on the rail when the rail was bad and uh, gone against the bias. As So sometimes there's that, that we see that in drying out tracks. And in the old days, we used to have biases all the time. Today, they're a little bit, uh, they're less frequent and not as severe, which is sort of too bad in a way. And, but in the short time we have to say, finding some sense of improvement, maybe from one race to the next, leads us, could lead us into a bet on a nice three to one, four to one, five to one, or 10 to one shot. The second thing I want to mention is the Power Page is really an exceptional product. I've been making it for oh, 30 years almost now. And uh, I make all 12 horses in the race, uh, go up to 12 horses. And there's a reason for doing all 12, not stopping at three, four, or five. Because when you see a bad horse and you have a Power Page in front of you, a badly rated horse who's all of a sudden getting a lot of money, Maybe two to one or three to yeah. one on the board. Maybe it we, should be four, five, or ten to one. We're going to get cut off by the computer, so why, I want you to keep that uh, bookmarked, and we'll talk more about it uh, tomorrow because that is interesting. But you got one more thing to say, and we got to say it. Have a great race day, everybody.